Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Ha'kodash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. It talks his truth and much peace, love, and salutation to the elect. Um, the brother Tazaman, I got uh, the elder Yatazak with me as well. And um, we want to do a quick lesson in regards to uh, this quote <coughs> that I seen by, uh, by Marcus Aurelius the other day. And, um, you know, Marcus Aurelius during the uh, Roman Empire, where Marcus Aurelius was a jape, all right, and in the movies, he's portrayed as a uh, as an Edomite, but he was really actually an Israelite, all right, he had a son by the name of uh, Commodus, and uh, Marcus Aurelius, he was uh, what you would consider to be as a uh, as a Stoic, all right, and a Stoic is uh, somebody that's very, you know, lives a very, very disciplined lifestyle, and doesn't really move to the right hand or to the left on things that they need to do, and, um, in a sense, really, honestly, it, you know, um, you know, us in this truth, you know, we're kind of stoics as well. All right. When it comes to uh, the disciplined nature of the scriptures and disciplined natures of, uh, you know, how we're supposed to conduct ourselves as men of the Lord, how we're supposed to act amongst uh, amongst one another, certain things that we do and certain things that we don't do. All right. But um, something in this quote, you know, really struck, uh, it really struck, stuck with me. And um, as you see, I, I um uh, I blacked, I blacked out a word because it had Roman here, but it, I, I put son of Yahweh at the top because it's, I'll just read the quote. It says, concentrate every minute like a son of Yahweh, like a man on doing what is in front of doing what's in front of you with precise and genuine seriousness. All right. Tenderly, willingly with justice and on freeing yourself from all other distractions. It says, yes, you can. If you do everything as if it were the last thing you were doing in your life and stop being aimless, stop letting your emotions override what your mind tells you, stop being hypocritical, self-centered, and irritable. All right, and, I, and when I read that, like I said, man, I was like, it, it was so many precepts was firing off in my mind of how, you know, we could, we could look at ourselves as, you know, as fitting that criteria, you know, stop, you know, I'm going to actually break it down the the uh, quote again and get some precepts as we go along all right but it says um it says concentrate every minute like a son of yahweh like a man all right doesn't the scripture say uh guard up your loins like a man all right doing things in a, 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 as a man and not being you know not having a feminine nature all right it says on doing what's in front of you with precise and genuine seriousness and when i read that part about precise and genuine seriousness it made me think of uh Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen, which I'll go ahead and uh, I got it. Okay, I'll this, uh, on to as well. Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen, study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needed not be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. So it says, study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, man, and that's one thing that we have to do as men. All right, as, as men, potential men of the Lord, is study. All right, you can't be out on the highways and byways and doing these lessons just just winging things, you know, and not reading, you know, and just out on, you know, just out just winging it. You know, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai wants a man that's going to be precise in what he's teaching. That's why the scripture says rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, being able to break down these prophecies correctly. Right, because that's one thing about it. Uh, you have a lot of people that quote scripture and think that that's enough. That they, they think they know the Bible because they can quote scriptures but without breaking these things down it's just like um when the lord said it's to uh it's not given to them it's given to you how he would give people a parable and if he didn't actually break that parable down to you then all you left with was whatever your understanding is of the parable right. and it's up to you to distinguish what it is but when your went with the disciples and told them exactly what it was that he was saying that's two different understandings you see, so if you only get the parable, it's hard to rightly divide the word of truth without having that being broken down to you. So when you say something to somebody according to the scripture, you have to break it down so they can understand what it means so that they can apply it to their life. Right. right? You got to be able to teach it to the point to where both parties can apply it to their life. Yep. Because it says, it, says, uh, it says you have to be uh, precise with what you teach. You know, understanding like certain breakdowns of, of, of knowing, like for example, the market of beasts. That's another. That's another uh, issue that's been uh, coming up as of lately. There's no um, gray areas if you rightly divide the word. 
Right. If you rightly divide the word of truth, there's no gray areas. Mm -hmm. There's no private interpretation. Right. You know? Right. Um, this I'm, is what the Lord's intent is, and this is what you follow. Kind. I want to get that word study in the Greek. It's mudazo, which means to hasten or to make haste. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something that we need to be doing in these last days is, is, is hastening to get closer to you. How about Shemal Shah? All right, as, as the scripture says in, in the book of Baruch, it says that since, since we've gone astray from you, how about Shemal Shah? We need to seek him 10 times more, if you roughly paraphrase it. All right? It says, and, and genuinely, you know, and genuinely, genuinely studying, not for your own so called, uh, you know, vain glory or anything like that, but you study to feed the lambs. You, you study to feed the flock. The greatest sign of humility is when you do is when you do something with the mindset of, of, of building somebody else up. You know, of course you build yourself up too, but you do it for the overall purpose, which the overall purpose is, is building the body of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shia, man. Uh, doing all things for the elect's sake, if you will. God. You know? Um, I'm going to grab a real quick precept. God. Second Peter. All right, chapter 1, verse uh, 10. It says, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Yep, make your calling and election sure, man. Because when you heard this word, it was uh, it, it grabbed your attention to the point to where you moved on it. Like like the apostle Elder Tahar says, we the action Jackson camp. You know, the, the, the your belief in these words are going to move you to, to, to teach. Right? And it don't take long. You know what I'm saying? Me, myself, personally, I listened for a year and I started teaching. Right. You know what I'm saying? But within that year, you learn enough, like the apostle said, within six months, you can learn a lot if you're diligent. So within a year, you know, and then that's when you see all these pages popping up and all that. You know what I'm saying? How long was you in the camp before your, before, uh, your page went up, the page that we broadcast it on now? Maybe like, maybe like two months, maybe. That's what I'm saying. You was you y'all was coming out there for what about almost two years. Y'all was coming out to the highways and the byways for almost about two years. Joined the camp within a couple months. You had a page that was putting up. That's what the apostles is talking about. That's 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 how you know what I'm saying. It wasn't it, you got same people that been in for the same amount of time. That's just still on the comment board. Right, right. You see, right. You got it. Um, quick precept. Go ahead. Second tide. Or, I'm sorry. Second tide. It's the book of Titus, <laughs> uh, chapter two. Uh, I'm gonna start at verse six. Uh, the NIV. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Second Titus. <laughs> Titus chapter two, I start at verse six, but the point is at verse seven. It says, uh, it says, young men likewise exhort to be sober minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Now that sober minded meaning having an understanding of the scriptures and applying it. You see? Applying the scriptures is the point. You can always say you can quote it all day, but if you can't be in a certain a certain situation. You know, say you're in a situation where you got to rely heavily on the spirit of the Lord. You do that in that situation to overcome it, right? Right. And you and you gain experience the more things you go through. Because at the end of the day, you praying for patience. You pray. You praying for experience. You praying to be built up, and the Lord is doing these things to do just that. Right. You got it. It says, uh, "Young men likewise be sober-minded. You know, having self-control. Yeah. You know, single. I yep. single. Yep." It says, in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. A pattern of good works, man. Meaning there's going to be opportunities for us to uh, excel. Yep. Opportunities for us to spiritually evolve, man. Yep. Right? Yep. If you have a pattern or something, you should constantly be seeing, you should constantly be elevated from faith to faith as it is written. That's right. You know, you shouldn't be in the same, like the apostles and the elders always mention the fact that, you know, you shouldn't stay, you, you shouldn't want to be in the same. <coughs> When I say position, I mean the same positions uh, uh, spiritually. Yeah, the scriptures talk about going from glory to glory. Right, right. Yeah. You don't want to be, oh, uh, well, this, you know, this is my line. I'm just going to stay. No, man, you should want to elevate, man. But see, you know what? The men that don't elevate fall away because yep. they didn't elevate. How do you elevate? The more you get into these scriptures, the more. That's, that's what I'm saying. Every time we add something spiritually to our arsenal, yep. you know, praying more, fasting more, uh, uh, doing the Sabbath service, learning the Hebrew, all these things that you add into your arsenal that you get from the scriptures are building up who you're supposed to be. Yep. You see, all these things are being brought back to your remembrance. Because if we go all the way back to those, to those first fruits, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? We're getting all our talents back one by one. Right. You see, until it's uh, 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 until we uh, 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 have that new body, until our bodies are changed. Okay. Go ahead. I'm going to get that word pattern. That word in the Greek is tupas. 
which means a uh, a dissuasive example, a pattern of warning. It says, uh, but the point for this part, for this particular verse, it says, an example to be imitated of men worthy of imitation. Man, <laughs> bro, it's just this mind being you. Be ye followers of me, yep. as I'm a follower of Yahweh Shai, man. What's the what? Well, Paul was given a pattern of good works to show as an example of how to walk. Just as the apostles and elders today show us a pattern of how to serve Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, and we follow the footsteps after our elders, man. That's right. We look at it. We look at Apostle Tahar, Apostle, you know, Apostle Gabar, Apostle Ramla, you know, Apostle Rakha, all right, and the different elders as well, all right, as men. Like, man, look, these are men that we that, that we ought to follow. Because why? They're following after Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. Yeah, I was saying, and a big thing is they doing it in the flesh, man. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? They know they're not perfect. They don't claim to be perfect. They just speak the truth according to the scriptures, man. And that's all that matter, man. Yep. You see? Just like how they said if the Lord was a gluttonous and a wild big, but they was complaining. You know, then John the Baptist was eating wild uh, locusts and wild honey. They was complaining. Right. You see? Go ahead. Yep. It says, um, it says, uh, of men worthy of imitation men worthy of imitation man following those men following our forefathers man these things were written aforetime time for our learning you see how they handle these certain situations dealing with the flesh and they give you insight on how you should yep go oh, ahead yeah. it teaches you how to walk uh, uh at, how to walk precisely God. you know because that's that's the biggest thing is, is are we walking according to the rule because hey what do you how would Sean say say be perfect as your father and therefore as your father is in heaven man yep you know and that, and that goes with walking a precise way, which goes with being, uh, as the elder Ariella was going to say yesterday, being uh, being more disciplined, you know? So I'm going to finish this up. It says in doctrine, sec, uh, I keep saying second Titus for some reason, Titus chapter 2, verse 7, it says, in doctrine showing, uh, uncorrupt, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. Uh -huh. You see? But it said, the, the key thing it says, in doctrine, right? In doctrine showing uncorruptness, man. Because you got a lot of people that show corruptness in the doctrine, which means that they're not walking precisely. God. You know? Uh, but jumping back to the quote, you know? So it says, um, on doing what is in front of you, in, in front of you, keeping your eyes single, all right, not looking back, but looking forward, right? right? On doing what is in front of you with precise and genuine, genuine seriousness. In sincerity and truth. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bro, it says in genuine seriousness. You know what I'm saying? And you can apply all those to the precepts. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. When you post that in the chat. Yeah, when you posted it in the chat, precepts just got to fly. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. It says tenderly. And then the next part that I wrote down was willingly. Uh. You see? Uh, can you grab... Uh, what is it? First Peter chapter five, verse one and two. Because uh, it said willingly doing this, man. You should willingly want to. You, you should willingly want to teach the word, man. You know we should willingly want to go out there and, and feed the lambs of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. You say First Peter what five? Come. First uh, Peter chapter five, verse one. All right. And first one, verse first one and two. All right. This is First Peter chapter five, verse one. The elders which are among you I exhort Who am also an elder And witness of the sufferings of Hamashiach And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed right. Feed the flock of Yahweh which is among you uh -huh. Taking the oversight thereof Not by constraint Not by constraint right. but, but, but willingly But willingly Not for filthy lucre but of a ready mind You see so it says, feed the flock of the Most High, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, being an overseer of the flock, knowing the state of your flocks, right? Uh-huh. It says, not by constraint, but willingly, man. You should willingly want to teach the word, man. You should willingly want to link up with brothers to do lessons. You know, whether it's linking up in the flesh or linking up over the, uh, you know, over the Google Hangout or, you know, whatever the case may be. God. Doing the work, man. You all right? It says, but willingly. It says, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Being apt to teach. Being ready. You know? There be time, there be times where you may, you know, you may, you may go to the highways and byways, or you may be doing a live show and a brother may say, you know, uh, hey man, go, you know, go up there and speak. You know, like if the elder, if, you know, if the, if the elder tell me, you know what I'm saying, hey, you know, you go open up camp, I gotta be of a ready mind to do so. 
having a ready mind to go into something with me be at the spur of the moment, man. Not like, oh shit, I don't know what to go into. Over scratching my head and I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Take off running and shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> man, I, I don't know what to go, man. Shit, I don't know. Oh, just break. Just, <laughs> yeah, just over here being, uh, being flabbergasted and, you know, having a, having a perplexed mind about it, man. No, that's not the way to be. You know, we should be, we, 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 you should willingly want to do the work, man. God. You know? It ain't that. Hey, that's why the apostles and elders been been going so go, going so hard on the fact that man, look, man, do your three videos a week, man. You know, what's three videos a week out of seven out 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 of seven days a week and twenty four hours in a day, man? It's seven days. It's ten thousand eighty minutes. Come on, man. Yeah, it's ten thousand eighty minutes in a week. You know, and I, hey, like you know, you know, you, hey. It's no, I man. It ain't no excuse, man. Hey, I'll also, I'll also say this, man. When the Lord said, when the, when the scriptures say, uh, talk about uh, uh, cutting off this world, man. Getting into the scriptures is how you do that, man. Yeah. You see, just like uh, just like uh, Elder Yasha Wamba got the uh, manners and custom series he got going. Yeah. You see, when you studying and reading it, well, that's what I'm saying. When you interested in your history and your heritage, and you get into it, you know what I'm saying. Why, why, why you studying? What you study and you got other people out doing whatever they want to do and what they like doing. Right. We like doing this. Right. So, you know, this uh, uh us getting into these scriptures and, and, and breaking these things down ain't no different than LeBron being in the gym. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Or KD or whoever your favorite athlete is, you know what I'm saying? At their craft. This is our craft, man. Mm -hmm. It just also happens to be tied up into our salvation. Right. <laughs> nah, for real. At yeah. the end of the day, because they they going to, they're going after a corruptible crown, man. God. You know, we're going after an incorruptible crown, man. Really, the, the you know having true riches, man, having true fame. You know, I want to get that word willingly in this verse real quick here. That word willingly in the Greek is who? Okay. Uh, hekusios. All right. Hekusios, which that word here means it says uh, voluntarily. All right, willingly of one's own accord. It says. Is tactically opposed. Is tactically opposed to sins committed inconsiderably from ignorance or from or from weakness. So you're not supposed to do this thing and coming to this truth, going onto the highways and byways, trying to teach in ignorance, man. If you have a willing mind to do so, man, you gotta have a ready mind too. At the end of the day, uh, it goes hand in hand. Yeah, and that willing mind, that willing mind is to be able to get out your own way and take your emotions out the equation and present to the people what the Lord is saying. All right, that's what I'm saying. When you rightly divide the word of truth, you giving the message of what the Lord actually want, what the Lord actually wants put out there. Yep, what He wants you to say. What He wants you to say. Yep. You see, that's why the scriptures refer to people teaching out of their own belly and the penalty for that. Yep. Quick precept: First Corinthians nine. I'll start at read verse sixteen and seventeen. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. That's what I'm saying. I have nothing to glory of because this is my duty, man. Yep. You know what I'm saying? If you have a job to do, your job is your job. If your job is to block, then you block. Just like going into the talents uh, that the Lord give you. What's that? Uh, first, uh, first Corinthians 12. Yep. The gifts. Yep. The gifts. Right. Do your job, like Bill Belichick. Yeah, they did. A, they got a documentary on the uh, the, the Bill Belichick. It just just do your job. You know what I'm saying? And you see the success that he's accumulated by people just doing their job. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It says, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. That's what I'm saying. So why, so instead of me being boastful and being swagged up because I did a lesson or I did a sit down or I went on the highways and byways, it's the fear of the Lord that put me out there. So I want to make sure I get that message correct. You see, because you can get out there and have everybody's attention and go just like the apostles always say, man, stick to the scriptures. You know, sometimes we get to talking too much and the scriptures don't come out. But no, 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 back up. So sometimes you call for the precept, you know what I'm saying, or you quote it. But then most of the precepts that you pull or most of the precepts that you call for are going to be pulled and brought out and broken down like the brother been talking about. Okay. You see, breaking it down. So if I quote and I say, so if 10 scriptures come out, if 10 scriptures come out, 10 scriptures going to be broken down. Four or five scriptures are going to be quoted, right, to make your point. But then the precepts that you have the brother go get, pull, and read, that's going to have to be broken down. Right. See? So you're going to be breaking down everything, man. You ain't just going to go. That's what I'm saying. Going from one precept to one precept without breaking it down, what's the point? Right. 
Right. You just reading. You just not. You're not breaking anything down. It's just. Yeah. You got to explain it. Right. Well, say so what we mean by break it down is explain this. Okay. I just read you two scriptures. Now I'm going to explain what these mean. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. If that's not your process of teaching, then the message is not going to be conveyed. Okay. Verse 17. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. That's what I'm saying. So that's <laughs> what. I'm, so you see him. He reasoning. Right. He's reasoning. Right. If I do this willingly, it's for a reward. But if I do it unwillingly, I'm not going to profit. Right. He, he's weighing his options. He's counting the cost. And he's teaching men to do such. Before you come in this thing, you got to understand, fully persuaded in your own mind, all these things. See, Paul was letting you know, look, you got to know what you're a part of. The apostles are always telling us, look, you got to know what you're a part of. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to see it. You got to be a visionary with this thing. Go uh, ahead. It says, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, <laughs> check this out, but if but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, he's like, look, if I do this thing willingly, there's a reward for me, which we know what the reward is, all right, having that eternal life, getting a glorified body, getting beamed into the chariots, all right, being saved out of this destruction, we have a reward, but if it's against my will, right, if, it, if it's against what I want to do, right, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me still. Cause what did, did Paul? Did Paul willingly? Did Paul willingly was like he he just sat down. And was like you know what? I'm gonna learn about Yahweh Shah. Or did Yahweh Shah out of? He, or did he just knock him off the horse and like this? This is what you're gonna do? Regardless of how you feel, I chose you to do this. Point blank. Period. Well, I'll say just like Jonah tried to run. Moses tried to make an excuse, you know what I'm saying? But now, now the Lord like, nah, man. I, and that's what I'm saying. That's how the Lord let you know. He like, bro, I, I bet on you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like with Job. <laughs> he, he bet on Job. You know what I'm saying? I was saying, if the, if the Lord bet on you, you can't make him a liar. You know yep. what I'm saying? You can't. It's impossible. You just better, I was saying, you I was saying, that, that should give you confidence for Yahweh, by Shib Yahweh Shai, to bet on you. Man, check this word, this dispensation out. It, yep. says, it says, the management of a household or of household affairs, specifically the management, oversight, administration of others' property, right? The mm -hmm. office of a manager or overseer, stewardship. It says, uh, here's a good point. It says, hence, the word is transferred by Paul in a theocratic sense to the office or the duty entrusted to him by the Most High, the Lord and the Master of the house, mm -hmm. of proclaiming to men the blessings of the gospel. Mm -hmm. You see? So the word it was it was it was it says it was entrusted to the apostle Paul, man. This word that we have, this gift of the of this knowledge, man, it's, it's been we have been entrusted with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh's money, man. Yep. And I say, guess and guess who those men are? It's the first fruits to go all the way back to the creation, man. Yep. If we those men, that's what I say. If we those men, it's that's what I say. Our memories are being stirred up to do the Lord's will, man. Yep. The elect are gonna do the will of the heavenly Father no matter what. So we believe that. So we doing everything, fighting tooth and nail to be those men. Right. It makes me think of. Uh, it makes me think of Gehazi, which was, uh, I believe, it was Elisha's servant. Mm -hmm. When uh, Elisha gave him uh, gave Gehazi his staff, and uh, he told him, "My like, man, look, you know, gird up your loins and go run, go run to the house where the where the, where the child's dead, man, and don't salute nobody. You know what I'm saying? Don't bid nobody farewell. Just go do what I told you to do, right?" And put the staff on the on, on, on the child's face, and he's going he's going to live. And now, uh, you know, Alicia still had to go there. But the point, of the reason why I brought that out is because what Alicia was given, he was entrusted with the mission, mm -hmm. and he didn't turn to the right hand or to the left. He just did he did what he had to do, man. That's right. You know what I'm saying? He was entrusted with with instruction to go do what Alicia told him to do. You see, Alicia was his master. You see what I'm saying? And and Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is our master. He is the Lord of the house, and we're pretty much. Managers over his flock. Yep. You know and that's what I'm saying. And, and just like that scenario that you just used with a uh, with Alicia mm -hmm. telling him to just go do the job. That's just like the apostle said. Look, make sure y'all get y'all work in. Mm -hmm. Make sure y'all get y'all work in, man. Mess. Forget all that other stuff, man. Get your work done first, man. Yep. Get your work done first. You should want to get your work done first for the Lord, man. Right. You see, <laughs> the Lord might give you a better time. Yeah. You see? <laughs> we, there's 24 hours, so-called 24 hours in a day, man. Yeah. There's there's plenty of time that you have to, to find the work, to, to find to do something somewhere, man. God. You know? 
And it should be easy, man, because you got the heads of the caps, man, that's putting out these lessons and giving out reading assignments and all that. So how you ain't got no? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. I ain't saying get on the I ain't saying get on a video and explain why you can't do nothing, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. That should be something that's just within you, man. Yeah. Here it is. You ain't did no video in a whole month, man. Something wrong with you? Yeah, you're not you're not taking this truth seriously, man. Because at the end of the day, if you ain't did no video in a month, man, you wrapped up in this world, man. Yeah. And that's just what it is. Or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Screen, whatever man. you got going. Whatever you got going, the work is suffering for it. So you got. I was saying you got other stuff that you rather do. It it, it, it just is what it is. Yep. You know, you got things that you rather do. I would say instead of rightly dividing the world of truth, you rather have a drink. It is what it is. The fuck you want me to do? Check this out. We're going right into what you're saying. Continuing on the quote. It says, and freeing yourself from all other distractions. And freeing yourself from all other distractions, man. You see? If you find yourself, I would say if you find yourself doing more uh more things uh other than reading or studying, then just cut those things off. I would say, yeah, and you don't gotta cut it off cold turkey. You know what I'm saying? Like me, for example. You know what I'm saying? What I what I decided to do, you know what I'm saying? It's because uh, uh, I, I came up in radio broadcasting, TV. You know what I'm saying? So the, 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 the radio shows and the sports shows and all that type of stuff, I, I, I usually watch them. But you know what I'm saying? I'm more interested in the highlights mm -hmm. than I am the commentary. I don't want to hear about nobody's opinion, so I just watch the highlights, which is a short clip. Mm -hmm. And those times that I would normally spend watching... 20 minutes of a sports show, I would do it, watch a video, or I would read for that 20 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Pick times and out, out to read. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to sit down for hours and read if you read on one lunch break. You know what I'm saying? If you read, I was if you got a 45 minute lunch, you read for 20 minutes on lunch. You read for 20 minutes when you get home. You know what I'm saying? You getting your reading in, but it's on it's on you to figure out how to fit that in along with your daily life to where it balances out to where you a whole. You see, and without getting into the scriptures, you can't do that. Right. The people, I would say, the brothers is having a hard time with the world and coming out of it and all that old shit is because they ain't reading. Yep. They ain't reading, they ain't praying, they ain't studying because they in the world too much. Yep. Yep. This is a precept about uh, keeping your eyes single from distractions. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with, about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, mm -hmm. looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith. So what? So at the end of the day, who, who is supposed to be the forefront of our focus? What? Who and what is supposed to be the forefront of our focus of what's in, of what's in front of us? Laying aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, right? If we run the race, as it tells you in 1 Corinthians 9, with patience that is set before us, in front of us, looking at things that are before, not things that are behind, mm -hmm. looking unto Yahweh Shai. He is supposed to be the forefront of our focus, man. Yep, we're supposed to be just like that girl on Coming to America. Whatever you like. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite food? Whatever food you like. That's what I'm saying. We're learning Yahweh Shai through the volume of the book, man, so we can be meat when he come back, man. Yep. He coming to scoop. I would say he coming to scoop his bride up, man. And the bride, I was saying, the bride is, is the bride is prophesied to be perfect. Right. Go right. ahead. It says, "Who for the joy, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame." That's what I said. The, the joy set before him, he was able to handle his business. Right. He looked. He, he saw the glory that gave him the uh, the ability to deal with the present. Yep. Right. Forward focused mindset. You see. He 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 saw. He saw the end. He saw the end goal, right? Before everything that he had to go through, he already knew what was right. to come afterwards. Man, he 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 seen it. He had a vision of it. He seen it. And he knew it. So he was like, "Man, look." It says, "Who who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross." We know what he had to go through and the passion and the sufferings that he had to go through on the cross. Right. Despising the shame, despising people that was talking shit about him, calling him a Beelzebub, saying that he would have the demons on him and all this other kind of stuff, lying on him. Despise the shame. And, is set, and and what happened? Since he had a forward-focused mindset and he freed his mind from distractions and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. That's heavy. You see what I'm saying? Now that's a reward. That's a reward, man. To be sat down at the right hand side of your hour? That's what I'm saying. And then it says you can be a joint heir with that. 
You know what I'm saying? Because I always like, I always say this, man, because it's true. Yahweh Shai received the elect as a gift. Meaning the Heavenly Father had already had picked them. They belonged to the Heavenly Father before they belonged to Yahweh Shai. Yep. You see? <laughs> yeah. So when you that's what I'm saying. And when you get when you get that's what I'm saying, it's just like how in the world your dad would be so proud when you graduate. Right. And he would make sure that your graduation gift was tip top shape mm -hmm. and it was something that you would be able to cherish for the rest of your life. Like a brand new car or You see what I'm saying? He wanted to he wanted to make sure that gift was gonna be perfect. Mwah. You see? Yep. And he shined up the elect and he gave them to Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai prayed for the elect because he's received his glory uh, uh, to a point as far as being head on the right hand side. But then his glory is going to manifest in the physical. Why? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right. You see, the order that's in the spiritual realm is going to make its way to the earth via Yahweh Shai and the uh, uh, and the elect. Mm -hmm. um, precept Proverbs 4, I'm going to read verse 23 and read down. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. I would say keep your mind with all diligence. Stay focused on these scriptures so you'll know that when things come up in your life that you can utilize the scriptures to be successful in these situations. Mm -hmm. Just like Elder Ariala always say, man, the the, the, the curses are a direct or uh, uh, reaction to disobedience. But if you do on the what the, what you can do to the best of your ability, the Lord ain't going the Lord ain't gonna uh, destroy. The Lord ain't gonna destroy you for being obedient, he's gonna destroy you for being disobedient. Mm -hmm. You see? So you can't take that cursed that cursed approach. The Lord didn't die on the cross for you to be cursed anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That word uh, issues in the Hebrew is uh, uh, thawa thawa taza awath. Thawa taza awath. All right. It says, uh, and I'm in the Hebrew Chaldee lexicon. It says the place from which any person or thing goes forth, hence a gate. It says a fountain, the fountain of life, Ooh. right? It's a fountain. So when you think about it, when you read it like this, it says, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the fountains of life. So out of, out of what you keep, out of what you put your mind to, whether it's on righteousness or whether it's on wickedness, right? Out of what's going out of your mind is going to come the fountains of either life or death. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's why when you read in Matthew the sixth chapter, Yahweh Shah said, "Keep thy eyes single, right? Because the light of the body is the eye. If the, light, if the eye is full of light, it's going to bring forth light or life. But if it's full of darkness, how great is that darkness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what you choose to put within your eye, man. Are you going? Are you going to choose distractions? or Are you going to choose salvation? Right. You see, you're going to walk. It's a tightrope. You're going to, but on the on the on the one side is fire, on the other side is water. Yep, because what you get in the world is temporary, man. What you get in the kingdom is forever. Mm -hmm. And if you can wrap your head around that, man, the, the 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 your future is looking good in the eyes of the heavenly Father, man. Because he's seeing you. He's seeing that through his words, you get it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? When you're trying to teach somebody something, and you see that they finally get it and they successful at it, man, that make you feel good, man. Mm -hmm. The heavenly Father ain't no different. You know what I'm saying? He want to smile on his son and. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Make it rain on his son because he do what he's supposed to do. Yep. You got it. Uh, continuing on, verse 24 says, Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Mm -hmm. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before that's thee. Like, just like, just like uh, uh, Alicia told uh, uh, Gehazi, look, mm -hmm. go straight. That's what I'm saying. Forget all the trashes. Go straight and get it done. Mm -hmm. Right? Life and This is life and death. Right? Right? Cause, mm -hmm. the, cause the, 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 the kid was gonna die otherwise. Right. The child was gonna die otherwise. So get straight to the point. This is what the job is. Don't do this. Don't do that. Go straight. That's what, just what he said. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. Ponder thy, ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. That's what I'm saying. Worry about the job at hand. Mm -hmm. To verse 27. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. And ye in the straight gate, baby. Yep. It says, man, you ain't supposed to turn to your right hand or to the left, man. But it says, remove your foot from evil, man. Remove your foot or your steps and your path from doing wickedness, man. That's what I'm saying. Because when you look to the right, it's BS over there. When you look to the left, it's BS over there. But if you stay single, the, the instruction is to stay single. Yep. Right? So if I tell you to go straight and you just make a left and I didn't tell you to, whatever happened to you is what happened to you. It's like, bro. That's what I'm saying. Who, who, who told you to turn left? 
You just decided you want to turn left. Like, no. <laughs> no, the direction, the only way you're going to get there is this way. What the hell are you doing over here? Like, way over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like, damn. Yeah, I was watching the episode of The Walking Dead. Everybody running away. Everybody running away. And then you got this one clown that decided he wanted to save a horse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ran back to free the horse and got ate up. Like, dude. Like, the, bro, every, so everybody was running this way, bro. Like, that's what I'm saying. Come on, the horse. Everybody knew the horse was going except you. Right. Bro, they had this nigga by his arm. <coughs> Excuse me. Running. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. He snatched his arm away, went over there, and got ate the fuck up. Trying to save the horse, though. Come on, man. Man. I'm going to finish up this little quote, man. It's just maybe like two two or three more scriptures, and we'll go ahead and wrap it up. God. It says, um, <coughs> the Bible says, yes, you can. If you do everything as if it were the last thing you were doing in your life. That's what I'm saying. You want to put your best foot forward, man. Strive for the truth unto death is what comes to my mind. Man. The last thing you go, that was said, the last thing you're going to do with your life is glorify your how by shit, your how was shot, man. Yep. It makes me think about the uh, the brothers in 2nd Maccabees yep. 7, man. The last, hey, man, it says as if it was the last thing they was doing, what was the last thing they was doing? Yep. Giving praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and not, and not uh, compromising with the enemy, man. Yep. Like, man, look, do what you got to do to me, man. But I, at the end of the day, I already know that I'm going to come back in the resurrection, man. Yep. You know? When, uh, the, when the apostles pretty much celebrated for getting beat in the name of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Precept. Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. That's what I'm saying. It's all about Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, and that glory, man. Mm -hmm. That's what I. That's what our duty is to do, man. Is to glorify them. Yep. You know. And the thing. And the thing is, they tell you if you glorify them, they'll glorify you. So it's. I mean, <laughs> that's a sweet deal, man. You glorify the Lord. You glorify the Lord now. He gonna glorify you in front of the whole world in due time. Yep. That's how I, I agree. <laughs> sign, sign me up. Sign me up. What I gotta do? Man, sign me up. Cause it's either that or thermonuclear destruction and Jacob's trouble and all that other stuff. Right. It says uh giving thanks to the most high and the father by him. Mm-hmm. All right. And then uh the last part, uh, the next part says, as if if you do everything as if it were the last thing you were doing in life, and stop being aimless. Now, when you get the definition of this word aimless, and I, I there's one precept I was gonna grab. That word aimless means here, it says, without aim or purpose, not having a goal or purpose. Man, you see? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And you got people that are coming to this truth with no aim or no purpose. Just, just. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm an Israelite and that's it. You don't say, you don't go on. You got some people out there that's Israelites that they don't scoff, they don't agree, they don't do nothing. They just know they're Israelites. They Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Then you got Israelites that's set up to be the two thirds, and then you got the hopeful elect. And then, well, you got the elect. You see, it's, it's it's phases and waves of Israelites. Yeah. <laughs> but when you have an aimless or not, a, if you have an aimless mindset, you you just don't have no purpose of why you, what, what you're involved in or what yep. you're involved in. Like like the elder mentioned earlier, you know what I'm saying? Apostles and elders always mention, man, you know, you got to understand what you're a part of. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand what you're a part of, you just, you know, going through the motions and you just, you know, just here, you know, a knuckle dragging hand in your pocket is just, just there. You know, shalom. You know, but you don't got no intention to grow. You don't got no intention to teach. You don't got no intention to really fully get into this thing, man. You just walking aimlessly, man. Yeah, it's all about the sisters. Yeah. Quick precept on that. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty-six. I therefore, I therefore, so run, not as uncertainly. Right now, let me get this word uncertainly real quick. This word uncertainly in the in the Greek is uh, adelos, which means uncertainly. Right, and then when you get the root, which is a uh, Adelos, it says not manifest, indistinct, uncertain, or obscure. Hmm. Right? And indistinct, when you look up this definition, we'll go ahead and just grab this real quick. It says not clear or sharply defined. Hmm. You know, you don't have a clear vision of what you even what you even a part of. You don't have no clear vision of what you even doing. Right. You're just there. Just take you know, just taking up space, just holding posts there. But not knowing they not knowing what you a part of, not knowing what you in, you know, having just an aimless mindset, right? So back to the quote, it says, not aimless, right? It says, stop letting your emotions override what your mind tells you. Man. You see? Gird up thy loins like a man. Mm -hmm. I demand of thee. 
Yeah. <laughs> Not letting your emotions override, like like uh, what, uh that 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 scripture in Ezekiel twenty four when Ezekiel's wife died, and the Most High told Ezekiel that his wife was going to die. And what did he tell Ezekiel? Look, your wife is going to die from a stroke. But God and teach the word. And, don't, and he said, "Don't cry." That was, and the thing is, that's what I'm saying. He prepared him for it by telling him it was going to happen. So that gave him time to prepare himself. Yep. As a man, he girded himself up, man. Mm -hmm. You see? And that's the whole point. To be able to gird yourself up, man. That's that's Everybody ain't able to do that. What if what if Yahweh Shah's emotions would have would have got the best of him and he just never would have... Uh, I mean, you know, he had that time when he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and was asking the Lord, is there any other kind of way? Yeah, if he, what just, if it's, what if if his he just took just, off running. Yeah, yeah, if he just took off running. But that's what I'm saying. That wasn't written. It right. was written. It was written that he overcame. That's what I'm saying. That'd have fucked all of us up if he'd have quit. Yeah. You know. What I'm saying? But no, it was written that he overcame. So we gonna roll with that. The last verse written. <laughs> then then, then Yahweh Shai ran off, and that was it. You know what I'm saying? End you know of the saying? story. Then end of the story. Then that's that's the end of the book. Come yeah. on, man. Then, then Yahweh Shai ran off, and it was nah, never found again. That's not what happened. That didn't happen. Man. It said he manned up, and he died for the nation. He died for the nation of Israel, man, which was the will of the heavenly Father. Hey, I got I got one for you. I got one for you. Uh, Second Ezra's part just came to mind. It's a spirit. Second Ezra, uh, chapter fourteen, verse uh, fourteen. It says, "Let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature." That's what I'm saying. That's like when you in that situation. When you in that situation, just think about Stone uh, Stephen when he got stoned. Read that again. Kind. Second Ezra's fourteen and fourteen. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Let go from the mortal thoughts. He seen them picking up rocks and all that. Mm -hmm. He knew he had cut them to the heart. He knew that he had cut them to the point to where they was about to kill him. But the spirit was on him so strong that didn't matter. Right. Right. He said everything that needed to be said for him to be justified and called up to the heavens right then. Mm -hmm. He said he got out every last word. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Lord said he gonna put your of uh, the words in your mouth. That's what he wanted to hear. He, that's what he wanted Israel to hear before he brought Stephen home. Yep. Go ahead. It says, cast away the burdens of man. Cast away the burdens of man, right? The burdens of man, this flesh. Right, right, right. Yep. You know what I'm saying? To hell with this flesh, man. You see, if this, also, if this flesh, if this flesh, if, if, if this flesh is only to go for a certain amount of more time, then it is what it is. I just want to make sure that I glorify you, how about you, how shot as much as possible before this spirit leave this body. That's it. That's all that matters to me. That's all that matters to us. Yep. Go ahead. It says, and, and put off now the weak nature. And put off now the weak nature, man. Put off that fleshly nature and grab a hold to your spiritual nature, which is going to flourish, man. Right. You see? Mm -hmm. And Stephen didn't see them. He saw the glory. Right. You see? Yahweh Shah didn't see them. He saw the glory. He saw the joy that was set before him. That's what it is. You see? Saint, let this mind be in you, which is in Yahweh Shah. And that's written too. There you go. You know? Another one, Galatians 5 and 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh -huh. If you walk in the spirit, you will be able to say no to the flesh, man. Mm -hmm. If you walk in the spirit, you will be able to say no to the RFID microchip. Mm -hmm. No matter what, the, no matter how, uh, no matter how convenient they make it look or no matter how threatening it is when they start, when it's time for them to force it. Right. People either going to get it through convenience or fear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And if you walk through the spirit, none of that matters. Go ahead. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in Yahweh with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. That's a commandment. That's a commandment. Yep. I've been, t I would say, me and my wife, me and my wife been talking about taking emotion out of the equation all weekend. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And she, she sees certain scenarios to where, so is this one of those scenarios to where you had to take your emotion out? And I'd be like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or what's the option? And then we'll go through what the options are. That's what I'm saying. Because at the end of the day, man, having faith and trusting in your how about Shimmy how shot in any situation is all you got, but that's all you need. Mm -hmm. Nothing else matters, man. Right. You see? Nothing else matters, man. That's what I'm saying. If you if, if I'm saying if you go if you go you can't you can't sacrifice the flock because of how you feel. Right? Uh oh, my phone about to die. Yeah, I'm about, I'm about to wrap it up. Yeah. I'm about to, I, uh, this is literally the last part here. Okay, I got 5%, so okay. it ain't going to cut off right now. But it says, um, it says, stop letting your emotions override what your mind tells you. Stop being hypocritical, self-centered, and irritable. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying, man, because when it comes to you, when it comes to everybody else, you the ultimate judge. But then when it comes to you, you can't take nothing. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to utilize the uh, the scriptures to be able to be the a, a good judge. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All that shooting from the hip, now nah, the Lord ain't dealing with that, man. It's like a saying that I heard. It says, uh, you you can't expect you can't expect to hold somebody else close to the flame, right? You can't ex you, you can't accept you can't expect to put some to, to put the flame under somebody else and hold them to a certain standard. But whenever you get close to the flame, it's a whole different scenario and situation. Yeah, it's different. You, it's different. <coughs> and how Yahweh Shai is going to come back and judge. It says, all shall appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, man. God. Every single last one of us, man. You know? That hypocritical nature, man. Hey, hey. Hey, it says, hey. Let me get this real quick. Let me just grab it real quick. And I, we'll end off on this one. The last one. Job 13, verse uh, 16. He also shall be my salvation, for an hypocrite shall not come before him. Right, so if you got a hypocritical actor mindset, I did a I did a lesson yesterday called uh, "Beware of uh, Beware of Hypocrisy." You, a hypocrite's not gonna come before Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. And Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai knows if you think of the, he he knows if you faking the funk. He knows if you have an ulterior motive. He knows if you're doing things out of vainglory and maliciousness. Oh, oh, it's common sense to not put a chip in your hand, but if you do, you can just take it out. You know, right? Them niggas. <laughs> Them, them niggas. Most high know he sees you, man. He knows. He knows what's going through your mind, man. He knows. He knows if you're being a damn. He knows if you're being. Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? De uh, deceitful, man. Yep. He knows that. You try to hustle. Trying to hustle people, man. And you know what I'm saying, man. The Most high sees that, man. Yeah. That's why I'm gonna read that last part again. It says, "Stop being hypocritical, self-centered." You know. It's not the chip. It's the playing games, being self-centered, man. Yeah, thinking chips that with no deal. Thinking that everything's about you. Having a mindset, thinking that this. The, 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 the I'm, surpri I'm surprised you. the video didn't say Zabak said chips with no deal. Yeah, you know, he like the. Yeah. <laughs> Zabak burns down Madison Square Garden. I know, that's your hunter that burned down everything. But yeah, yeah, Zabak, you know, yeah, Zabak doing all kind of stuff on the highways of the Bible. But he's self-centered. He's proud. <laughs> and, he, and the thing is, man, that, that proud nature is going to get him destroyed, man, if yeah. he doesn't repent. It, hey, any last one of us, not just him. Any God. last one of us, man. God. Having that self-centered mindset, thinking that ego tripping, man, thinking that it's about you. Hey, hey, man, fuck your opinions. Fuck my opinions. Fuck his opinions. It's about your how about yep. some y'all shy's opinions, what let, he got to say, yep, man. Let your how be true and every man a liar. <laughs> Straight up, man. You know? It says, and stop being irritable. You know? Hey, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, man, look. Hey, the, hey uh, oppression make it the wise man mad. But at the end of the day, man, hey, the scripture says, fulfill ye my joy, man. We got this truth, man. God. We got the true riches. We got true knowledge, wisdom, understanding, man. So hey, at the end of the day, hey, man, we got to walk with it with joy, too, man. There's going to be times where you're going to be mad, you know, but you ain't supposed to live your life being irritable every fucking day, man. A damn storm storm cloud over your head every damn day, man. And the brothers don't want to be around you because you just, yeah, oh, that, man, fuck this world. Yeah, that that means you don't believe. Yeah. Yeah, that means you don't believe. Hey man, Yahweh Shai, it says the joy that was set before Yahweh Shai, man. So man, hey, you know, have joy amongst what we got what we got our hands on, man. What Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is giving to us, man. You know? But you know, that's it. You know, I didn't want to let this be too long. I believe the point's been made. Um, we want to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught us his truth, in which peace, love, and salutation to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.